This is part B of the automated data entry form with reverse checkbox. You can watch part A where we created the form design along with drop list, checkbox, and option buttons by clicking on the link below this video. I am Nabil Murad. To follow along, you can download the finished file of part A and the step-by-step -step manual by clicking on the link below the video. Now, let's resume our project. After creating the drop list, the option buttons, and the checkbox, now I want to insert a preparation sheet. So I click on the plus sign to insert a new sheet, and I'll name it preparation. In cell A1, I type yes. In cell A2, I type no. I'm preparing for creating the buttons for submitting the form. I need to adjust the row height, so I select row number one and two, and I can double the row height, and also for column B, I want it much wider than I expand column B. In cell B1, I want to insert a picture of the submit button, and in cell B2, I want to insert the same exact button, but I want it invisible. So I can start creating these buttons and save them as pictures. To create these buttons, I go to the Insert tab, I click on the down arrow for shapes, I click on the rectangular shape, I click and drag to create a rectangle, I can increase the curvature of the rectangle, I can widen it, and then I want to make it green, then I change the fill color and I make it green, I want to bevel it, then I go to Shape Effects and bevel it, and now I want to type some text, so I'll be typing Submit. I can format the text. I want to make it much bigger. Then I go to the Home tab. I select a bulky font, and then I increase the font size. I center it right and left and up and down. And you can keep making improvement to this button, but let's assume this is the one I want. I can either right click and save it as a picture. So I right click and select save as and save it as a picture. I'll be inserting this picture in cell B1. Alternatively, I can copy it, control C, and then paste it as a picture. I already created three buttons, the submit button, the white invisible button, and the red incomplete button, and I saved them as pictures. I'm going to delete this shape and I want to insert pictures. I select cell B1, I click on the insert tab, click on picture, place over cell. I navigate to the folder where I saved the pictures. Here is the submit button. I want to insert it and I have a blank button and I have the incomplete button. I need the three of them. So I'm going to resize, reposition the buttons. I'm not using the incomplete button for now. So here is the submit one, the incomplete, I'll keep it to the side. And here is the blank one. I will resize them and position them and center them in cell B1 and B2. And I have the buttons ready. My next step is to name cell B1, yes, and name cell B2, no. I do that by selecting from A1 to B2, and then I go to the formula tab of the ribbon and click on Create from Selection. Alternatively, I can use the shortcut Control-Shift-F3. Left column is checked. I hit OK, and I would have named cell B1 and B2. Let's check. If I click on the down arrow and I select Yes, then B1 is selected. If I select No, then B2 is selected. I want to create a defined name as well. And to create a defined name, I go to the form worksheet. And in the form worksheet, I click on define name. Alternatively, I can hit the shortcut Control Alt F3 to open the new name dialog box. In the new name dialog box, I give it a name button. And this name refers to cell G24, the drop list, but I don't mean G24, I mean the named range returned by G24, then I use an indirect function, equal indirect, I open bracket, and I select cell G24, I close the bracket, I hit OK, and I would have created my defined name. My next step will be creating 
three functions. I'll be creating a function that builds the date. I'll be creating a function that will look at my selection for the option buttons, whether I select virtual or in person, and returns the same word here. Remember that the option buttons are linked to cell N17. And the third function will create the functionality of the reverse checkbox. In cell F10, I create a date function to build the date based upon the user selection from the three drop list day, month, and year. Then I type equal date, and there I hit tab. The date function requires a year, and the year is coming from cell E10, comma, a month coming from cell D10, comma, a day coming from cell C10. I close the bracket and hit enter, and here is the date. In cell K18, I want to create a conditional if function that looks at cell N17, which is linked to the option buttons. So I type equal if, and then I hit tab. If N17 equals 1, I want virtual. I type a comma, and in double quotation, I type virtual. I close the double quotation, I type comma. Otherwise, I want to return in person. So I type it in double quotation as well. I close the bracket for the if function, I hit enter, and I have virtual. These functions will be later hidden. I select cell C24, where I have my drop list, and I create another if function that looks at the drop list in G24. If it's yes, I want to return true. Otherwise, I want to return false. Then I type equal if, and I hit tab. If cell G24 equals yes, I type it in double quotes, comma, please return it true, comma, otherwise return a false. I close the bracket and then I hit enter, and now I see the reverse checkbox working fine. I can switch to a no, and the checkbox is not checked and it appears in red. Let's switch back to yes. Now I want to insert the incomplete picture. I already put it in the preparation worksheet. If you didn't do that, then you can insert any picture and use it instead. We'll change it anyway. I go to the preparation worksheet. I select the incomplete picture. I cut it, control X. I go to the form worksheet and I want to paste it somewhere here, control V. This will be the position of the submit button. But I want the submit button to pop up whenever I select yes, and I don't want to see any button when I select no. So with the picture of the incomplete button selected, I hit F2, and in the formula bar, I type an equal sign, and I type the defined name button. When I hit tab, and then I hit enter, now I can see the submit button. Wonderful. The submit button should only appear if the user fills up the entire form. So right now we are not filling the entire form. So it shouldn't appear and the user will not select yes. So when I change my selection from the drop list from yes to no, the submit button disappeared because instead I have the blank button. Look at this outline. I don't want to see this outline and the solution for hiding this outline is to go to the preparation worksheet and remove the grid lines. I go to the view tab, I uncheck the box for grid lines, and now I go back to the form worksheet. I don't have an outline. I want to check one more time. I select yes. The checkbox is checked and the submit button appears. I'm going to set it to no because the form is not complete yet. My next step in preparation for collecting the input from the user and transferring it to a report worksheet, I need to name all the labels and I need to name all the input cells, the information provided by the user. I start by selecting cell C6 and then I press Ctrl, I'll be selecting 16 cells. While pressing Ctrl, I click on the first name, the last name, the date, 
the participants, the address, the city, the state, the country, zip code, email, phone, course selection, delivery, recording, and payment. These are all the labels. So I go to the name box and I give them a name, my labels. And I hit enter. I want to do the same for the information provided by the user. But I'm not going to select the day, month, and year. Instead, I'll be selecting the cell having the function where I built the date. Also, for the option buttons, I'll be selecting the cell returning whether virtual or in person. Your selection for the user input will be exactly in the same order like the label. So I start by selecting the company, the first name, the last name. For the date, I'm selecting cell F10. And then I want the number of participants. I want the address. I want the city. I want the state, the country, the zip code, the email, the phone, the course selection. And now I want the delivery. Then I select this cell where I have my if function. I select the recording and I select the payment. I go to the name box and I want to name all these cells collect. And I hit enter. My next step is to create formula for transferring the data input. And to do that, I go to cell 03. I'll be create a to call function. Then I type equal to call. I hit tab. I want all my labels in one column. Then I type the name my label. I hit tab. I type a comma. And I want to ignore blanks, if any. Then I type 1, I close the bracket, and I hit enter, and I get all the labels in one column. I will do the same for the user input. I use a toCall function for the range named collect. In cell P3, I type equal toCall. I hit tab, and I want the named range collect. I close the bracket, and then I hit enter. And here is the user input in one single column. I can apply some formatting. Let's say for the date, I hit Control Shift 3. So when I transfer it to the report, it will be formatted. For the phone number, I hit Control 1. I go to the special category and I select phone number. I hit OK. And for the number of participants on the home tab, I change it to general. Whenever you see a zero, that means I don't have a value in the corresponding cell. My next step will be building the report. So I insert a new worksheet and I name it report. I go back to the form and I select all the values in column O returned by the to call function, my label. I want to copy them. I click on copy and then I want to paste values while switching the column into row. Then I go to the report worksheet, and in cell A1, I click on the down arrow for the paste command. I select paste special, and I select values, and then I check the box for transpose. I hit OK, and now I have column labels for my report. I want to copy and transpose the first record, then I go to the form worksheet, and in the form worksheet, I want to complete the record. So I'll be providing information for the company, the first name, the last name, and all other fields. I entered some sample data. Then I want to transfer the user input to the report worksheet as a first record. I select the corresponding values in column P. And then on the Home tab, I click on Copy. I go to the report worksheet. I select cell A2. I click on the down arrow for the paste command. I select paste special. I select values. I check the box for transpose and then I hit OK. That is my first record. Now I want to convert this report into a table. I adjust the width of the column and I convert it into a table by hitting Ctrl T. I name the table report and I adjust some formatting. For the date, I hit Control Shift 3. 
For the zip code, I wanted text. For the phone number, I hit Control-1, go to the special and select phone number. I hit OK, and I adjust the width of the column. I will be collecting all records in this table. And the more I add records, they will inherit the same formatting. I go back to the form worksheet. I want to transfer the records automatically. To transfer the records automatically, I'll be creating a mixed macro. What does it mean, a mixed macro? It's a macro in which we switch in the middle of recording from relative to absolute and back to relative and so on. And because I have all the information provided, then I'm going to switch from no to yes from the drop list in cell G24. I click on the down arrow and I select yes. Now it reveals the submit button. Right now, it's just a shape. Later on, after recording the macro and attaching it to the submit button, clicking on the button or clicking on this picture will trigger the macro. What does this macro do? This macro will look at the record in column P and it will add it at the bottom of the list in the report worksheet. On the developer tab, I want to make sure that use relative reference is not selected because I want to start the recording as an absolute macro. I click on record macro and I want to name this macro transfer. I hit OK and I'm in the process of recording. What does this macro do? This absolute macro starts by selecting all the cells from P3 to P18. On the home tab of the ribbon, I want to copy this range. And then I go to the report worksheet. In the report worksheet, I want to absolutely select cell A1. At this point, because I don't know how many records I have, and I want to jump to the first empty cell, whether I have one record or a thousand record, then I go to the developer tab and I want to switch to relative recording. I click on use relative reference and now I'm recording relatively to cell A1. I hit control down arrow, that will take me to the last row and then down arrow one more time to move one further row down, that will be the first empty row. On the home tab, I want to paste special then I click on the down arrow for paste. I select paste special and I want to paste values and I want to transpose the pasted record. I hit OK and here is my record. I click on the company name of the inserted record and now I want to switch back to absolute recording. On the developer tab, I turn now fuse relative recording because I want to absolutely go to a specific range in the form worksheet. I go to the form worksheet and what I want to do is to clear the form in preparation for collecting new record. I select all the cells while pressing control. I'm not selecting anything related to the delivery, the option buttons. I will hide them later. Did you fill up all the fields? I select it and then I hit delete to delete everything. An important step is to select cell G24 and manually type, not select from the drop list, type the word no. When I hit enter, then the submit button disappears. Conditional formatting unchecks the checkbox. If you select it from the drop list, it will not be recorded as a step in the macro and it will not hide the button. And then in preparation for stopping the recording, I select cell C7, the company name, and I want to stop the recording. When you record a macro, then you have to save the file in a .xlsm format. Now I want to test my macro then I have to enter a sample record and I have to select yes to show the submit button. Let's start by entering another sample record. Did you fill up all the fields? Yes, I did. Then I click on the down arrow for the drop list in cell G24. 
and I select yes. Now I can see the submit button. The corresponding record has been populated in column P. Now I want to link the macro to the submit button. I click on the submit button, then right click. And from the right click menu, I select assign macro. The name of the macro is transfer. I hit OK. It's not a regular picture anymore. If you deselect the picture and then hover over the picture one more time, the mouse pointer appears as a pointing finger. And when I click, if everything works fine, then the record should be transferred to the report worksheet and the form should be clear. Now I hit the submit button. The form is cleared. The submit button disappeared. And if I go to the report worksheet, the record has been added to the bottom of the list. Then my macro is working fine. Let's go back and prepare for finalizing the form. I want to hide my functions. Then I select the cells having the functions, the date function in F10, and I select K18, the if function, and I select cell C24, my second if function that controls the checkbox. And on the home tab, I want to change the font color to white. Then no one will see these cells anymore. I want to change the color of everything around the form. Then I select row number one and I want to make it, let's say, a darker gray. And I'll do that for everything outside my form. I also want to hide my preparation for the drop list and my preparation for transferring the data. Then I select column N to column X and I want to change the font color to make it like the background so it will be invisible. There is also an option that you have to set in the Excel options dialog box so that you don't get when the form is empty, you don't see the green triangle at the corner of each cell having a function. And to do that, you go to the file tab, you click on options, and then you go to formulas and here, make sure you uncheck the box, enable background error checking. If this box is checked, I want to show you what happens. I hit OK. Then you see this green triangle and on these green triangles, we don't want to see them. Then I'm going to uncheck this option. On the file tab, I click on options. And on the formulas category, I take the check away from enable background error checking. If you want, you can hide the preparation worksheet, leaving only the form and the report. Now the final step in my project is to protect my form so that no one can modify it. Only user can provide values for the input range. So I select all the input cells and I want to unlock these cells. So I'll be protecting all the locked cells except the unlocked cells. And to do that, you can go to the Format Cell dialog box, or you can click on the down arrow of the Format menu on the Home tab. Right now, they are locked. I want to unlock them. It's more clear if you open the Format Cell dialog box. So I hit Control-1 and go to the Protection tab. It's clear that they are locked. I'm going to unlock them. I hit OK. The Option buttons will not work if N17 to which the option buttons are linked is locked. So I need to select N17. I can go to the name box and type N17. I hit enter and I want to unlock this one. So I hit control one to open the format cell dialog box and I take the check away and I hit OK. Now that I have the cells where the user input will be providing values, all of them are unlocked. To apply protection, I go to the Review tab, I click on Protect Sheet, and in the Protect Sheet, if you want, you can provide a password and confirm it. I'm not going to do that, but make sure that you have Select Locked Cells unchecked so the user cannot select any cell outside the form, and at the same time, select Unlocked Cells, the one that we just unlocked for the user input. We are allowing the user to use these cells. Also, check the box, Edit Objects, and that's all what you need in this dialog box, and then hit OK, and the form is ready to use. To test the form, 
I'll be typing a sample record. I filled up all the fields. Then from G24, I select yes. The reverse checkbox appears in green and check. The submit button pops up. Now I want to transfer the record. I click on the submit button and everything works fine. Let's have a look at the report worksheet. The new record has been added at the bottom of the list. In this tutorial, I showed you how to automate data entry in a form. We created the form. We used a combination of dynamic array functions and classic functions. We built the date, we talked about formatting, we talked about the reverse checkbox functionality, we used the lookup for a picture, we created a mixed macro, absolute and relative, we created conditional formatting, and then we protected our project. If you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.